things aren't right, being the right route or the right methods aren't being called, look at your method names. They have to be, all caps is also required, I believe. Make sure that they're spelled right, because if it's even just a little bit off, oddly enough, the computer won't figure out what you meant, and it will not find your method. Okay? Any questions so far on doing REST with WCF? Yes? Are you going to explain where the person argument comes from, or goes to? The person argument. Oh, you mean in the put or the post? In the put. Or the post. Well, okay, so what happens is, um, let me just, I'll close it. So this is Fiddler, and it's a tool I use for debugging REST-based web services. And what it has in this is this thing called the Composer tab. And basically this is for mocking up REST calls. I, have, I can pick whatever verb I want here. I put my URI in here. Every request is going to have a header. But only certain verbs like post are going to have a request body. So that's where the person would come from, is your request body. So what happens over here is it's going to, for the post, I don't have any URI template arguments, but I do have a, I do have an object or class, an object coming in. So it's going to assume that that body, once it's uh, from JSON or XML, once it's uh, deserialized, it's going to be a person object. Same with the put. If it's at, because it's at the end, because I already have a URI template argument mapping here, it's going to, and because it's an object, it's going to assume that that is what's coming in my message body. Okay. Good question. Okay. So let's fire this up real quick. And I'll show you one of the cool things I like about this. But I'm going to copy this address because I'm lazy. Okay. So one of the cool things about debugging is I can just do this. If I don't want to write a test harness, I can just do this in my browser. And you can see there, I just I got a list of people back. I got wrestle demo people, array of person. I already I seeded the repository with the Fred Flintstone when we started up. We got back that list. You guys remember we also had the one here with the uh, you could get a specific person ID back, so we'll get one. And I got just him back this time. And you notice this is all in XML. Okay? Um, Post and put would work as well in the interest of time. I'm not going to show you that for this example. I'll show you for the FBI example, though. Now, that's XML. If I want to get J Jason from WCF, this is where things get a little ugly. So these all are pretty easy to look at. You look at the service contract, it makes sense. But I don't have any JSON going on here. Down here, I've created my JSON methods. And unfortunately, with WCF, you can't, unless you want to get into some really complicated custom behavior writing, or you want to get a custom behavior, there's a couple on CodePlex, some of them work great, some of them don't, they've all got issues. You have to do some weird templating and routing. So what I've done here is I basically have my same, same contract replicated here again, except I had to stick, one thing I don't like is, I've had to stick JSON in the name of everything because I can't override a method, obviously it's got the same signature. Problem number one. I've had to tell WCF here that I want that default for, I want that format to be JSON, which is fine. There's two arguments here. There's, as you can see here, there's a request format, there's a response format. I had to set them individually. That's problem number two. Because sometimes one will get set and the other one won't. And you'll be sending JSON and getting back XML, and the guy on the other end's like, what's going on? This doesn't make any sense. And you're right, that doesn't make any sense. So that's problem number two. The reason I don't like this number three is because I've also had to change my URI template and add WACJS to the end of everything. Which is not a perfect solution, but my clients or my users of this web service will understand, okay, if you want JS, take whatever your normal URI would be and just put WACJS on the end of it. So if I go back to here, and I put WACJS on the end of this, I'll get back the same data as a JSON object. 
So with WCF, it's not an ideal solution, but it is a workable solution. So if that is your only option, you can definitely do it. You can definitely create a web or based web service. But it's also a good kind of impetus if you're getting into a lot of this at your company to kind of maybe nudge your boss, hey, you know, this is working, but it's not great. If we went to .NET 4, this would be much more awesome or I'd get done faster and we'd all get raises. I can't guarantee you'll get raises. <laughs> Any questions on WCF? How many guys just love the way WCF does raises? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you do? Is that water or? I got a there. And why aren't you sharing? Okay, so that was old and busted. <laughs> so now we have Web API. Now, I'm going to write this from scratch. I don't do a lot of live coding in my demos because usually I don't have time. But I want to show you guys just how, if I had to type that whole WCF thing, um, A, I'd kill myself before I got to the end, and B, you guys would get bored and leave. So I didn't do that. But Web API is so ridiculously simple, I'm going to live code that here. I do have an, the Julia Child's turkey in the oven done. <laughs> It doesn't work, but hopefully we won't need to do that. So what I've done here, this is the exact same project, this core, that I had before. It, it's just that repository, the person. You guys can download it later. Believe me, it's, there's nothing in it that's interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new project here. And I'm going to pick an MVC4 project here, .NET 4.5. If, if you do it in 4, it's exactly the same. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to call it personnel directory dot web. Now, for those of you who haven't done MVC, this is going to come up when you create an MVC project. And depending on what versions, you're going to have different options in here. People get hung up on these options. Really, they all will create the same application. The only difference is going to be you're going to get a few more bells and whistles and preset scaffolding, depending on what you pick. I'm going to pick the Web API, so it's going to cre automatically create a couple little configuration settings for me. Uh, the two most common you're going to use are Internet and Intranet. Those create almost exactly the same application, except one of them uses Web Forms for authentication, and one of them uses credentials, or a uh, membership provider. If you create one and go, oh, I meant to do the other one, you, I think you're changing three lines in the web config and you're done. So don't get too hung up on picking the right one or wrong one here. But I am going to do Web API because that's going to be easy. Now, these options exist in Visual Studio 2010 or in 2012? Uh, they exist in 2010, but they're, they're a little different based on what version of MVC. I think for MVC 3, I don't think you have single page with Facebook. Okay. But you should, I don't remember if you have mobile or not. I know you don't have those two, but you'll have, the mix will be different based on what version of MVC you're on. But you should, as long as you're 4 or higher, you should sell Web API. Wait, wasn't that, wasn't MB, um, Web API and MVC 4? Isn't that when that was released? Uh, yeah, it is in MVC4, and you have to have .NET 4, yeah. Right. Yeah. So you'll have that. But it works in 2010. It does work in 2010, yes. So we'll hit oh, and this will go for a little while and spin. Are there any questions while this is going on? This is going to take a couple of seconds. Okay. Oh, quicker than I thought. All right. Close that. So it's created this web project for me. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with MVC, I'm going to try and kind of, uh, along as we go, explain what I'm doing while I'm doing. For those of you who already know MVC, just kind of bear with me. Uh, the first thing I want to do here, and remember I'm doing this from scratch, is I like to use something called AutoMapper. Uh, when I write my web applications, I like to create what's called an anti-corruption layer between my core domain and whatever is facing the outside. It's, you guys have all seen that layer cake. Presentation layer, middle tier, database layer. For me, it's the same thing between web and domain. I don't want those entities shared uh, for a variety of reasons. I'll go. I'll talk. I'll tell you about that afterwards if you want. But at the end of the day, I need to create some kind of layer between the two of those to map from one entity type to the other. I have found the best way to do that is this tool called AutoMapper, which I'm going to get from NuGet right now. And there we go. So install that for me. So that's the first step. Okay. Hope. Yes. Okay. So I've also kind of created a few little baked turkeys already. 
First, I'm going to create a thing here called View Models. Um, for those of you who have done MVC, there's the Microsoft way, and then there's what I consider the correct way of where data lives. And while I'm doing this, I just so I divide my models into view models and domain models. Microsoft, if you go to a lot of their MVC demos, they put everything, or I shouldn't say everything, they put, where are you? Oh, there we are. They put everything in as far as data in the controller, as far as calling the back end. Did I spell something wrong? Oh, I did spell something wrong. Hopefully this doesn't work. So what you'll see in a lot of their examples is uh, in the controller, they're calling a lot of things. They're reaching into the business domain. I don't really like that. And the reason being, if you think about how model view controller is supposed to work, my view in my controller is my presentation layer. And the controller in HTML, really the pure, again, the pure presentation layer. I don't necessarily want those coupled to my to my front end. So what I have here oops. Oh, you do that, huh? All right. Add a reference here. Okay. So what I do is I create more of a structured a layered architecture. So I'll write in the middle here so everybody can see. The Microsoft model has your view here, which talks to a controller, which talks to this business domain layer over this, hopefully you guys can see this, this pen's not really dark, uh, over this layer. And it really uses the model as a dumb bag of stuff. That's better. My problem with this becomes I'm not tightly bound on the front end to my business domain layer. So if this changes, I've got to change everything over here. And my controller has to know more intimate details about the business layer than I want it to. So what I do, and this is, makes, this is going to make sense, which is why I did a personal model and a people model. I prefer to do view to my controller which I really just want to be a dumb web-based traffic cop to my model, I call it a model layer, which then talks to my business domain layer. This means that I can change this and this independently. I don't have to worry about, as my business changes, my business model can change with it and still affect the controller. I'm changing fewer things and it helps me establish those separations of concerns. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying uh, that's the way Ruby, Smalltalk, and every other platform that does MVC does it, except for Microsoft. So take from that what you will, but that will explain why this demo is going to look the way it does for that perspective. Yes? I don't want to take you away from your presentation, but that's really the same sort of thing that happens with entity frameworks too, right? That they show you how easy it is to Right, business logic against so objects synthesized up on energy framework, right? I mean, am I, am I so, seeing so the same not, problem I mean, in two houses here? So, no, I'm not super, I'm not super knowledgeable on energy framework. What I've seen about it kind of creates the same issues I have with this. You're right. I'm tightly binding my front end to my back end, which I don't like doing, which is why I really, I don't use energy framework. I use Fluent and Hibernate. Now, with energy framework, you can still do this. You have to do more than heavy lifting on your own. But I'm okay with that because I want the separation. But you're right. It does foster that whole ball of tar style of architecture, which we've been told for years don't do. We had, we had a project where we had a consultant come in, and one of the things he pushed was using Entity Framework because it was going to eliminate all that boilerplate code that we're all fond of writing between the database and the, and the uh, data transfer layer, data transfer objects. And that's true, that all went away, but then I saw the, the binding coming in. And right. so the solution to that is to write all that code that we were supposed to be getting rid of. And so, we're talking about the yeah. same thing here with uh, 
Um, you're trading one for the other. Was so probably the, the same thing though here with the view model controller? Well, the thing that I want to introduce here, which might answer that question, is let me add this real quick. Sure. Oh, shoot. Um, you saw me add a NuGet package a couple months ago called Automapper. Mm -hmm. And what that does, uh, I can't type the talk at the same time apparently. Okay. What that's going to allow me to do. So Automapper, is a, I don't know if any of you guys are using it now. If you're not using it, you should because it's really slick. Um, what it is is a tool where I can basically say I have this person object here and this person object here. And one is in my web layer and one is in my domain layer. And I want you to map them. And as long as the names and types of fields are the same, you can just say, hey, Automapper, know that this exists and this exists, and it will figure out all that on your own. These two lines of code are all I need to map that one, the entity person to the domain person. That's it. And it's done. Now I can, there's a fluent language in this where if I have things that are named differently or I want to ex have certain numbers not get mapped, I can say ignore this or this maps to this or I can even write a, a custom method that'll say, hey, when you're doing this, if it's one, if it's one, I mean Monday, if it's two, I mean June or whatever. But for the most, 99% of what I do, two lines of code and I'm done. And you can even put that in code set and it's fit. It's done. I'm, I'm chuckling here because if the mapping is direct, it's only two lines of code. But then again, if the mapping was direct, you didn't have a problem in the first place. Well, for mapping, but the problem is you still want to keep them on separate layers. I don't want the domain person getting over here. I want I have a person up to here. That's what I want to cross to go here. Well, I mean, I mean if, if we had the uh, automapper salesperson here telling us how great it was to use, and he said, look, you can use two lines of code as long as your objects are the same. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they're not the same, well, now I've got to write a lot of configuration code. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the same... Uh, it's still not bad. Same, it's, it's still easy. less. I mean, it's really it's, easy to use. So you, here, for remember, let's do... I'm going to take... Please remind me to take this out. Uh, let's say first name... Okay, so I, I see what you're doing here. Yeah, I mean, I can tell it. I'm trying to remember exactly how I do this. And to be honest, you end up doing this so infrequently that I don't even remember off the top of my head exactly how to do it. I'm not sure that's right. But I mean, if I wanted it to ignore that member, that's all I had to write. Just say, hey, first name, ignore that. We but, both solved the problem in our project by just keeping them the same. And, and, you know, in 99% of time, that's what ends up happening okay. anyway. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. was, yeah, we, we knew we were violating all the, you know, the, the, the Lexus level of, separation of concerns and keeping layers separate, but it was right. okay for us. Well, yeah, practicality has to enter 